If you are new here, my name is Laura and this is my YouTube channel where I tend to talk about crafting in general, usually knitting, yarn dyeing, sometimes crochet. I'm not very good at crochet, but I still do it. <laughs> uh, this is not a podcast episode. If you are here for the Lonely Knitter podcast, this is not it. This is just going to be a little video where I'm going to chat about something different. So if you are looking for the podcast, skip back to previous videos. I've just eaten dinner. I feel like there's something in my teeth. Um, and you will find me chatting about hobbies and fun things. Um, but this is just a little video with some questions that I was asked over on Instagram and um, and a few other little talking points, a review on me being one year into my own little business and um, not full time. So it is my full time income, my full income, my only job. So that in that sense. Um, but I will, I will go into that, more of that in a moment. So yeah, this is a one year review of um, Bumbling Yarns, The Lonely Litter, um, Crafters Bum and all of that since I left my job after my last maternity leave. <laughs> I can't believe, I mean, it's been over a year since I started dyeing yarn, but I didn't, um, leave my maternity leave job well, after maternity leave I didn't leave my job until November but I had had the last three months of unpaid maternity leave so I'm in the UK let's rewind because like every video I do it all starts awfully so my name's Laura I'm from England I am from the most easterly point of England in the UK and I live here with my husband my four-year-old daughter my one-year-old son my very old cat and my three-month-old puppy why did I do that to myself three months old puppy why why did I do that to myself <laughs> um and and yeah this is where I come to chat all about my crafts and everything and in February of no it was March in the end March of not this year the year before 2020 um I set up a kickstarter in February my business then began in March it's all just before covid and then covid shot me down um I started making crafters balm and then in June of 2020 I started dyeing yarn and now we are all the way over here in October 2021. Um, in November of 2020 I handed in my notice at my job after my second maternity leave and have been doing this ever since. Uh, and yeah so I thought I'd do a little one year chat about everything that's gone on, difficulties that I found and um and wonderful things and just how I felt about it as a little first of all because I get a lot of questions <laughs> so I can put them on here and, and direct you guys somewhere but second of all um just for me really to have it on here and and have something to look back on as as it hopefully goes forward so I have a list of questions that some very lovely people asked me over on Instagram so if you don't follow me on Instagram I am at the lonely knitter and that is where you can usually find me. I will usually reply to messages over there, things like that. Uh, sorry for the face. There is no makeup on it. Hopefully you have not cast me onto your telly and this giant mug is just plastered across your living room because that would be bad for you. <laughs> um, it is quarter to ten at night which is when I do most of my work after my children have gone to bed and before I fall exhausted into bed. So um, yeah, I never really look that amazing at that time of day. I definitely need an eyebrow wax. Things have been let go. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start off with my questions and they'll probably, I'm a talker, They'll probably lead into me talking about other things. Um, but if you have any like further questions or anything from this video that you'd like to know, send me a message on over on Instagram um, or uh, through my website. I will put the details below. Um, and if you would like to support the podcast, many videos, the YouTube channel in general, I do have a Kofi. I will put that below if you feel like supporting, um, but you don't want to buy any yarn. If you want to support and you do want to buy yarn, my website is below as well. And um, feel free to head on over there. If you are watching this video when it goes up, 
I currently have a 15% discount going on my website and it is yarn friends all one word all in capitals and you can get 15% off everything that's over there until the end of Sunday and that is the 17th of October 2021 I think I don't even know what day it is <laughs> um yeah you can get that it's valid on everything except clubs and pre-orders everything that is in stock on the website right now it's valid on those the lighting is awful in here I have not positioned my lights very well one of them is in the house so I was taking pictures in there earlier while my little boy was napping the other one is over there at a bad angle I keep looking at the light and then can't really see for a few minutes <laughs> And, um, and I have overhead lighting in here as well, so I just look like I have really big bags under my eyes. Probably isn't that far from the truth. Anyway, I'm going to get started. Uh, so, the first question was from my friend Emma, and she said, How do you find time to launch a business with two little ones and a puppy? <laughs> um, I also had uh, another question which sort of ties in with this, so I'm going to say it at the same time, and that is, How did you manage to start working full time for yourself so fast? Um, first of all thanks for asking <laughs> um and uh, and emma thank you for asking i always feel like my friends are the ones who show up for me on those question things because i'm like what if no one asks what if no one cares <laughs> um but lots of you did so it's fine okay so how do you find the time to launch an I don't have the time. I just get more and more and more tired and one day i'm sure i will just sleep for 24 hours straight because my body will refuse to wake up i have a thing that is like if I'm not doing something I feel like I am not worthy I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue with anxiety mainly and it is that I feel that my self-worth is tied to whether or not I am successful throughout life and 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 that's usually it's really unhealthy it's really unhealthy and I hate it basically um it's it is mainly just it's just my personality type i want to i want to do this this is something i want to do and i don't want my life to hold that hold me back from those things my children my family my puppy i want everything to enhance our lives and make it all lovely um and i would feel really sad if i had to if i couldn't do things because of that now obviously to a certain extent that's always going to be the case when you've got kids when you've got a puppy when you're this age and you just have responsibilities um life is hard and you can't always make the decisions you want to make but I have a very supportive husband and um and he takes on more than his fair share of the cooking cleaning and child rearing um when he's not at work and he works full-time bless him and but yeah he's very supportive because he wants me to be able to have my thing even though I'm staying at home with the kids and um and I work in every second that there is time if my little boy's having a nap I'll be working if they go to bed in the evenings when they go to bed in the evenings I don't sit down on the sofa with my husband anymore I come out here into the garage and I work and it's priorities it's choices and I will do that until I feel burnt out and then I need a couple of days where I just try and feel a bit better and then start going again and and what keeps me going throughout all that is that I know that my little boy's one he'll be going to nursery when he's three he's almost two so I've got a year and three months before he is eligible for nursery and um my little girl's already started school so in a year and three months he'll start going to nursery three days a week and I'll go from having one day a week of childcare to having three days and I am like I'm just working towards that how amazing will it feel when I suddenly go oh three days not one um so basically I'm constantly looking at the light at the end of the tunnel and that's what keeps me going in terms of how did I manage to start working full time for myself so fast, I have this conversation with a lot of people. You have to remember that I was going from two days a week. Before maternity leave, I worked Mondays and Tuesdays and every other Saturday in a pharmacy. 
um, and I really liked my job a lot but I like this a lot more and I actually feel like this fulfills me whereas that job wasn't something that was in my heart at all it was just a yeah it's good do it go home this is something that runs through every fiber of my being I've been knitting since I was five years old I am 31 now um and it's just it makes me feel whole and like I'm doing what I've always dreamed of it makes me feel like I'm I finally found my thing so you know it's priorities again like I could have gone back to that job after maternity leave but I wouldn't have been able to be flexible for my children when my little girl is sick and needs a day off school I don't have to worry about trying to find that childcare and it is hard like working parents both of us are working even with me only working part-time every time you want to do something with your children you have to work it around work um so I feel incredibly lucky that I have the chance to do this and build my life around my kids um I know everyone can't do it and I also you know and I don't I don't have any judgment or opinions on anyone else's parenting in any way shape or form this is just how I'm doing it and it's working for us but I didn't go from a full-time job to this. I went from two and a half days a week, or the equivalent of, because it was every other Saturday, two and a half days a week of employment to this. So I was, it's half. It's a half-time job that I'm having, that I'm losing, not a full-time job. Also, I didn't earn very much money. I was a dispenser in a pharmacy. I was not a pharmacist. And uh, it wasn't that much over minimum wage. So... I wasn't I wasn't going and losing a huge income to go to something where I wasn't sure I was going to get any money. Um I was losing a not that great income to go to something where I wasn't sure. And there have been months where you know I think there's a misconception online that a lot of people seem to think that if you're a yarn dyer you make tons of money. Um last couple of months for me have been really hard. And because they've been hard, I've been scared. Um, and I've never felt like that before. I've had a job since I was 16 years old. I've had two jobs most of the time since I was 16 years old. I was 16 and doing A-levels at high school and like staying there. Like, so I was in school until 18 and then I went off to uni. But at 16, I worked weekends, weekends in a new look and evenings in a co-op supermarket. So it's scary for me to not have, not know that I'm getting that money every month. So... Yeah, I did it. Don't compare yourself because if you're working full time because I didn't have to lose a full time income. And I'm not, it's not always rosy. <laughs> so, you know, yarn dies like any other self-employed person. Sometimes the money isn't flowing. Okay, next question, because that took me way too long. How important is social media in your business? Any tips for someone who's not that great at it? I'm not that great at it either. If you're watching this and you'd like to send some tips my way, I'll take them. <laughs> um, oh, you can tell I'm really knackered. I'm starting to go a bit loopy. Um, so, yeah, I um, I know people say post every day on Instagram and work across multiple platforms and etc cetera, etc cetera. social media is hugely important to my business it is the main drive to my website whether it be youtube or instagram instagram is the main one really and um if i didn't do it i wouldn't have any customers because that is how i reach my people <laughs> my friends <laughs> um so it's everything and it's hard for me because i see my social media as my place to go and chat to my friends as well so that's where I connect with the Arnie community it's for me it feels like quite a fine line sometimes between working there and being there for fun and um most of the time it's the same but yeah it's it it feels like a my Instagram to me feels like a really personal space where I can chat to a lot of friends and feel really comfortable and sometimes I forget that actually it's also a business place for me and you should be posting every day and all these things and uh, and I don't have a clue what I'm doing so I need to, I need to work on that <laughs> okay next how uh, no, that's that one would you recommend becoming a yarn dyer to others my lovely friend Jess <coughs> no <laughs> Uh, 
if you can take criticism. <laughs> okay, so I have had, <laughs> okay, here's a bunch of the things that I've had. I've had people say, no one would ever buy that. Or I've had one person say that. I've had a person say, that's nice, but you can get something better from here and send me a link to a website of someone else's yarn. <laughs> I've had someone say, that's lovely, but it's too expensive. Um, and I have got a question about money at another point, so I will talk about that in a minute. I have had people say, um, oh, you must make so much money through um, dyeing yarn. Like, wow, send me some free yarn. <laughs> Um, I, I've had so many little comments that have made me feel like this big. Um, I think yarn dyeing is an amazing thing to have a go with. And there are kits all over the place. I used to have them. Um, sometimes I still do. I think I still have a little bit of stock, stock left. I might put some last yarn dyeing kits up on the website and get them out and done with. But it's one thing dyeing a couple of skeins of yarn for fun. And it is a whole other ball game, um, making it in larger scale and then recreating colorways and trying to sell it when it's a very saturated market already. And I came to it late, I only came to it just over a year ago. And so I'm I'm very new, relatively new, very new in, um, in terms of yarn dyers. I would say you have to be prepared that if you're if you're becoming a yarn dyer and you put your yarn up for sale and it doesn't sell you have to be prepared for that because it is the most demoralizing thing when you take something and you put it out there and you go i made this and i i love it and here it is i hope you all love it too and everyone goes yeah <laughs> like you literally feel like you've been kicked in the tummy so, and I think it's probably like that with any self-employment, right? Like, if you're making something and you're putting it out there and you're hoping people will buy it. So, that's one thing I will say. If you try it and you love it and you want to do it, do it. Because everyone should do what they really want to do in their heart. And I wouldn't ever tell someone not to. But, if you're going to do it and you're going to do it as a job... Go into it with your eyes wide open. Can you take that feeling that your stuff isn't good enough if it doesn't sell? Because I tell you what, I didn't think about that before I started all this. And there have been weeks where I am just gutted when something doesn't go well. When I plan something out and think it's going to go amazingly and it doesn't. I, it's horrible. It's a really gutting feeling. So there, honestly, that's how I feel. <laughs> um, next. How do you, I love this one. How do you find it being friends with other yarn dyers, especially ones with bigger followings? This came from a friend who I chatted about something like this with before. Uh, I haven't got an issue. So I have a lot of friends who are bigger yarn, like uh, bigger following yarn dyers than me. And most of them are some of the most encouraging, kind people I've ever met who would help you with anything the minute they could. Um, I found, and I know this isn't the case for everyone, but I have found the yarn dyeing community to be incredibly caring. And, um, and, and I know uh, this is a coming from a very privileged, privileged position as, as a person like walking out there just going everyone's nice to me everyone hasn't been nice to me i've had horrible moments there are yarn dyers out there who have said things that have hurt my feelings but being friends with yarn dyers the ones i'm friends with some of the most supportive people in the entire world um i don't really get jealous i might get envious and think oh i wish i had whatever was going on with them i wish that was happening to me but I don't want to take it away from them. And I and it wouldn't stop me from feeling good for them. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think if I was more of a jealous personality and was like, you got to no, don't hit me. Then uh, <laughs> that was not an attractive face to put onto the YouTubes. Then maybe it wouldn't work as well. 
but I just don't that that just isn't really how I that's not how my brain works um I find being good friends with a few dyers who have large followings they are some of the kindest nicest people they are just like me in terms of being a person who put themselves out there and they just so happen to click and find that success and they've done well and or whatever they've done it's worked um if that was me i would want other people to be happy for me so i would be happy for them um and they've always been some of the most and i think i think the the reason that they are some of the most supportive and lovely people is because they remember being new and they remember being starting out and being scared and they remember not having a huge following and so they also feel really blessed to have built what they've built my chili's coming back i had chili for tea it's all i could taste it's gross sorry <laughs> um yeah so i don't have an issue with being friends with bigger name yarn dyers or smaller name yarn dyers uh i just want to be friends <laughs> probably don't want to be friends with me because i'm incredibly annoying <laughs> just on youtube just on youtube i i'm i'm very tired i'm very tired and uh i'm worn out i need a nap i need to go to bed it's like <laughs> it's night time <laughs> um okay okay keep going laura because otherwise you're never gonna finish uh if you could pick only one base to oh i like this question if you could pick only one day base to die forever what would it be and why I am a boring cow and I would say sock yarn. <laughs> Chester Wool's sock yarn. Uh the 7525 um Marie Superwash Merino nylon. Because it's hard wearing and you can hold it double to make DK. And then I would have quite a lot of it that I can pinch for myself, so I can pretty much make anything I want to make. Um I I like all yarn. <laughs> apart from ones that are scratchy because I have a princess neck and a princess this um no I, I um I don't mind I uh I would say that was probably my um my go-to it's incredibly boring sorry <laughs> uh oh I like this one favorite flavor of crisps so I did say I was crying. Ask me anything. So you can ask me anything. Just ask. Don't worry. And I got what's your favourite flavour of crisps? <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> uh, ready salted. I'm boring. I really like salty food, and it's awful. I know. I know it's not healthy. I am really trying hard not to pass that on to my children. Um, which is why we never have ready salted crisps in the house because I will literally chow down. We'll go through a multi pack of eight bags of crisps in one day. It's not good not good um okay how oh i like this one how do you set i like them all <laughs> how do you set your price oh my gosh i just lift my arm up and realized that i still have toothpaste from where my darling son wiped his face after brushing his teeth um uh yeah <laughs> how do you set your prices some yarn dyers are really cheap versus some really pricey okay first of all um I was cheaper and I have put my prices up. I started using a different wholesaler for my yarn. So when I first started out, I was the lower end of the range. And I say the range goes from £16.50 up to about £22 in the UK for, pardon me, for sock yarn. Well, like £75.25, either sock or DK or that sort of range. Um, depending on who you are, what following you have, whether you're VAT registered, etc, etc. So I have a few thoughts on pricing with yarn and I'm going to share them with you, even though you haven't asked. Um, so I was on the cheaper end, but I was getting a much cheaper base. I then, um, so some of my yarns were like 16 50 some of them were £17. And I then switched to this base. And when I switched to this base, it was £2 more a skein for me to buy in. And I realised that that was what everyone else who was sort of selling for about £18 was buying. And I absorbed £1 of the cost. So I, I went up from 17 ish to 18 
and uh, even though I was paying another two pounds per skein um, but I feel like it brought me in line with most people some some bigger yarn dies are still cheaper than 18 pounds I'm not I, I'm not debating whether that's wrong or right if they, they can everyone can set their charges their prices at whatever they want to but this is what I will say uh, I do not want to devalue the work of other yarn dyers I do not want to bring the market value of yarn down um yarn dyes work incredibly hard it is a time consuming uh job it is a physically uh hard job my this shoulder has not been right for months and i don't know why but it is definitely i don't know what i did whether it was lifting or whether it was twisting or what it was that i did but i am not a very fit woman anyway and uh, and it definitely is work related but yeah it is a very all consuming job so I had a chat with someone who said, I sell mine for £14.50 a skein because it's just a hobby. And that's good for you if you can afford to do that. And again, I will not come to you and go, you shouldn't do that. But my opinion is that if we all value our work, our time, if we're selling something, if you value yourself at what you're worth, then there is a fair market value for the yarn. And people can pay themselves a living wage. I'm not sitting here saying I want to get rich. I'm never going to get rich off this. The numbers that I'm never going to get like that, like, unless I suddenly hit the Instagram YouTube jackpot and went up to like 70,000 followers. You know what I mean? It's never going to happen. I'm a small dyer and I'll probably always stay a small dyer. I've been doing this podcast for what, three years, four years? Um, and my business has been going for over a year. I don't think I even have 3,000 followers on Instagram. So I've accepted that this is my lot. But if if my customer base is as small as it is, if it doesn't really grow, but I went down to £14.50 a skein um, at this base, because again, maybe other dyers who are selling for cheaper are selling yarn that they buy for cheaper. But for this base, if I went down to that low, I couldn't even remotely afford to live. So I know yarn dyers who do this full time. And, and you know, it's my full time thing in terms of it's my only thing. But again, I am lucky enough that financially our family can just about scrape by um, with me earning a very small amount. <laughs> um, but other people, like I know people who's entire families now work within their yarn dyeing business it's their complete and utter livelihood if it went they couldn't pay their mortgage they couldn't pay their but they couldn't afford to live so i set my prices um in what i consider to be a fair meeting of all of the other yarn that i see the dyers that i see and how much time, effort and work goes into my yarn. And I've had people say, you've only been going for like a year and a half. Do you think you were not 18 pounds and seven, instead of 17? And you know what, sometimes I think if I knocked that pound off, maybe I would get a few more customers and maybe it would boost my business. But then a little voice in the back of my head says, don't you think that it's, fair that you should earn a living wage don't you think that's fair um yeah i do <laughs> um and and you know and i'm not saying that like, so these are 18 pounds i'm not saying that 18 pounds is the exact right number maybe i got it wrong maybe it's me and i've got it wrong i've had a lot of conversations with people about um hand dyed yarn not being affordable and that you can go and buy a um ball of acrylic for one pound fifty or you know and that and that hand dyed yarn should be more affordable and I see that side as well that it's hard when you don't have the money but you want to join in with that same product but at the end of the day hand dyed yarn is a luxury product I didn't used to I wasn't able to afford hand dyed yarn until I was probably about twenty six 
because after I left uni we just had a lot to pay for and I just couldn't afford to buy it so it wasn't until like I was working full time and we'd paid off loads of debt and we were finally at this point where I could start buying the odd skein of hand dyed yarn and my stash isn't that big in terms of hand dyed yarn I have a lot of commercial I have a lot of um cheaper yarns but I don't have a lot of luxury I have two cubes in a calyx that I'm looking at two cubes of a calyx that are full of hand dyed yarn that I've bought from other dyers I don't have the money most of the time I didn't or I didn't have the money most of the time um so I understand but I see it as a luxury product and I see the time and the effort and the work that goes into it and how much people put into it and they have to live off that and it's not I mean it, it I couldn't you know it is four times the price of one of those £1.50 balls of wool just to buy the undyed base so it's never going to be that cheap because people have to make a living so yeah um i've i've, I've been on both sides I've, I've been in pretty much every side <laughs> as a yarn buyer <laughs> um and and you know there's then the then the case of if people are saying that 18 pounds is too expensive i feel so sorry then for businesses who have to contend with the fact that they are now that registered and they have to charge 20 pounds a skein they've had to put their prices up 20 percent, which is the usual you know the usual amount that people will put it up by the VAT amount when they become VAT registered. Um, otherwise, again, they're just losing money and and they can't afford to live. Um, but I feel sorry for dyers that have to charge twenty pounds a skein because they're VAT registered and get flack on top of that. But you know, like everyone's just trying to make a living, and no one wants to upset anyone. I wish it could be. I wish this. I wish I could buy this for a quid. I wish I could buy it for a quid. It would be a lot cheaper for me to pass it on then. Like, you know, but I can't. Um, and it is something I will always think about. I, it's part of the reason that I have had clubs and things that I will offer minis and smaller amounts so that there's all in posted an option for my monthly club that's like 13 quid. Just because I want there to be something so that people who, like me could join in. Like me? five years ago I would be the person who go oh, I could could join in if it was 13 14 quid but I can't really afford 20 or 30 so I get it I get it I set my prices how I set them and sometimes I wonder if it's too high and sometimes if I wonder if you know I would do better if I made it really cheap but I think I am where I need to be and I just don't want to devalue the job in this marketplace um not for me and not for anyone else feels really ah. that was a hard one that was harder than I thought it was gonna be I wrote these out so I'd screenshotted them as I as they were coming in the other week on Instagram and then I just wrote them onto a bit of paper like just before this video and because I wrote one after the other and after the other just down I didn't really think about um about the answers I just wrote it down and then came out here and sat down maybe I should have thought about this more but I kind of wanted you to have my first response do you know what I mean like here's how it comes out of my mouth maybe in a total jumble and you will never come back here again <laughs> um okay Oh, I like this one too. How's EAYF planning going? So EAYF is what we call our festival. So East Anglia Yarn Festival is the yarn show that I am organising with a couple of my friends. And it is in Norwich and it will be next March. End of next March, last weekend in March 2022. And um, yeah, we're taking over the holiday in uh, by Norwich Airport, the Norwich North Holiday Inn which is the one right next door to the airport and um, it's going to be a, a lot of fun there isn't any big yarn shows um, within a, a sort of a couple of hours minimum radius of where I live um, and there's a lot of amazing fibre artist talent in this bit of our country 
Um, and there's also a lot of amazing fibre artist talent wanting to come over to show this bit of our country what they have to, to sell and show us. So um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It, we have accepted all our vendors. We are now starting the admin stage of all of that. So um, it's, it's a lot even more work. <laughs> um, but, but it's uh, obviously it's the first year so we have nothing behind us we are like brave new world so um ask me again in a few months you may find a very frazzled looking woman <laughs> okay uh next question oh um so this was a couple of questions about my dying um and one of them said, do you consider yourself to dye a particular style? Some yarn you just look at and know the dyer. I totally agree with that. Um, Kelly Lay, Lay Family Yarn, if I see her yarn, I 99.9% of the time go, that's Lay Family Yarn. Um, <laughs> just because, like, all, most of her stuff just has this really cohesive, like, um, mainly beautiful speckles. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know that that skill came from that dye. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, I just, um, this question was from Steph. Steph, I'm still experimenting. <laughs> um, I haven't been dying that long. I have found a love for semi-solids that you wouldn't believe. And I've just got my hair caught on my own grid wall. And that is awful. It's still attached. I, I'm not going to edit this out because this is genuinely how my life has been going recently. <laughs> um, yeah, I am finding my own way, definitely. I am still relatively new to this in terms of uh, grand scheme of things. You know, I haven't got years of knowledge, experience and expertise that people like, for example, Kelly have. And some of my yarns are a flop. Some of them I die and I'm like, yes! And no one else thinks the same. <laughs> um, For example, this one and this um i was really chuffed with how this one came out it's really vibrant there is um like a lot of dye went into this and a lot of washing <laughs> because uh when you use a lot of dye i just wanted to make sure that absolutely none of it was going to come out afterwards um and yeah it's not a popular colorway this is bite me um and uh and yeah it's not a popular colorway so sometimes things absolutely just flop on their bums um and then I think maybe that's not maybe that's not quite right and I'll try something different I'm still at that experimental stage I'm now coming out of it I'm now at this point where I want everything to work together and I'm really keen for like I, I'm really keen to start designing yarn colorways and groups in sets like proper I want to start making collections um but again, I'm just scared. <laughs> it's also hard to make a collection as a newer dyer who hasn't got an awful lot of money behind them. You know, you if you're wanting to invest in that first, you have to buy all the stuff, all the yarn and everything. And then what if you put it out there and it doesn't sell? So that's always a danger. Um, so I don't consider myself yet to have a particular style. I think I'm getting there. Um I'm starting there's a lot of things that are starting to come out and I'm like oh that's quite similar like dyed the same sort of way and so I'm, I think I'm starting to get like that um but I really just need a bit more time as things go on to uh to work on my dyeing styles um I don't think you could look at my yarn and go that is definitely bumbling arts maybe you could maybe I'm doing myself a disservice uh, but I don't think so. Um, and the next question was also about yarn dyeing. How do you decide on your colours for dyeing? They're always amazing. That was from the lovely cat. You're an absolute rock star. Thank you for making my day. Um, I take inspiration from literally whatever is in my brain at that moment. 90% of the time it is something my child is shouting at me or has smeared on something or is watching over and over and over again on the telly. 
Um, sometimes it's nature, sometimes it's something that has totally calmed me down. Quite a lot of the time it's Disney films because I love a bit of Disney. <laughs> um, yeah, I again that is partly why I really want to start focusing my efforts into making collections because I do feel like at the moment everything's a bit haphazard and that took me this moment and then this took me away the next moment and yeah I'm not really sticking in a good train of anything um so those were all of the questions that I was going to answer uh a few of them were sort of more in depth and, and I spoke to those people and we had little chats instead um but yeah I would say that one year in to leaving behind my day job and taking on this it's been one of the most fulfilling years of my entire life I finally felt like I was doing something I was really proud of and I felt like this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. I I could not believe the sense of pride, that's not a good thing is it, but pride in myself for once that something was going right and as a person who struggles with anxiety, mental health issues, um, generally feeling like they are not worth anything and feeling like they're not good enough to have to make something and have someone choose to come and buy that I know that other small business owners who are in the same situation as me I know that you know that feeling of like oh my gosh someone else thinks I am worth something and it's not good that, that I know it's not good that that's how tied my businesses to my um, emotions and like my feelings of self-worth but that's just my personality and you guys my customers my friends my supporters you're the people that have raised me up to feel like that over the last year so thank you thank you very much you are literally making my life <laughs> um but there is a flip side to that uh, in this last year, I've had some of the lowest feelings when something doesn't go how you thought it was going to go or when sales haven't been great one month and you're struggling for money and sitting there thinking, oh, if this, none of this goes, what am I going to do? Am I just going to be some weird loner who can't pay our bills but has a very large amount of yarn? <laughs> um, Yeah, there has been nights when I have gone to sleep and woke up 15 minutes later and then 15 minutes after that and 15 minutes after that and just tossed and turned all night because I am so scared uh, that it's not going to go right but again that's my anxiety quite a lot of that is my anxiety so I think if you want to do it be prepared to need to be very strong for yourself and also do not sit there and go I'm going to do this full time and quit your job if you've got a mortgage and lots of bills <laughs> Because if you, you know, went from full time, chances are you're not going to earn that money straight away. Um, yeah, I have had some months where I haven't been able to put, I've had two months, two months where there were points in that month where I couldn't afford to put fuel in my car to go out with like friends and things like that. So I was like, no, sorry, we'll just have to go for a walk around here. <laughs> or you can come and see me. <laughs> Um, and that is just the nature of life. People say, oh, you need to build up a cushion. That is one thing I would definitely recommend. Build up a little bit of a cushion um, and, a, and some money so that if you have a quiet month, you can cope. Um, I wasn't coming from a place with a cushion <laughs> and then um, kept investing in my business and then... Um, Try, just trying to grow as much as I could and maybe that's another thing that I should maybe say don't try and run before you can walk I've talked to you guys for nearly 45 minutes very self-indulgent very just nattering on about my own feelings about things sometimes I look at the podcast and think oh my gosh who is gonna ever want to watch this rubbish um <laughs> But I thought I would put it out there anyway, um, mainly because the only people I spoke to today were one, 
four and a dog. <laughs> um, and my husband was watching some sort of car program that I was really not interested in. So, and I didn't think he wanted me to interrupt it. So I came to talk to you guys instead about everything to do with my little business in a year. So yeah, that's going to be everything. I am actually going to go to bed, which is bizarre because I haven't been to bed before 1am for as long as I can remember. But I am hitting a wall. <laughs> I think I need to go. So I'm going to go to bed. Thanks so much if you've got this far listening to my absolute rambles. The most boring video in the world. I am so sorry. Uh, it won't be like this from now on. We'll be back to re regular podcasting. I'll be back at that within the next week. And um, yeah, I hope you have a lovely day, lovely weekend. Thanks so much, as always, for making me so much less of a lonely knitter. It's not a podcast episode, but I feel really weird if I don't finish with that line. <laughs> anyway, bye bye. Thanks, guys.